Alex Speaker is Marlene Umra or Dreamweaver. And uh, she's a star seed, a blueprint connector, a way shower, a dragon rider, soul guide, a healer, a martial artist, a creator, and a spiritual alchemist, and a dreamer. What an amazing. <laughs> that is beautiful. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Kevin. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to have to change that dragon rider thing because it doesn't really fit, but I don't know what else to call it. So, But I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that because that's why I asked the question just to see where it went. So yeah. um, it's, been, it's been irritating me um, because rider is not really the correct term for the people that I'm, the dragons that I'm working with. So it's a very special type of dragon's hole. I'll, I'll Actually, I'll talk about that. I actually didn't have any idea what I was going to talk about tonight. <laughs> but, so I've got a, I've got a kind of an idea, but I, I just, I'm just going to let it flow. Um, so let me start off with um, saying that I'm, I'm busy transitioning from doing um, a semi part time job in my own business as a healing practitioner um, to going to go and travel the world and doing. Um, grid work with specific sacred sites and points around the um, around Gaia. <clears throat> and I'm starting to work with the with Gaia's energetic um, chakra system. So, like we have chakras, Gaia also has chakras, um, and there are different sets of chakras, earth chakras, um, on the ley lines. Just like like there are. Um, Lots of energetic lines in our own bodies, the meridians, and these points and long rows, meridians. <clears throat> and then these groups of energy points that form the chakra system. So the set of chakras I'm working with, or going to be working with, no, I'm actually, I am working with, ha. The set of chakras is called... It's a very specific set, and it's a, um, linking into Diana Cooper's work again because she was the first one that I became aware of that actually used these terms as far as not just our own personal human chakra system, but as planetary chakra. So she was actually talking about a specific set of earth chakras, and she it was totally different from all the other chakras, the earth chakras that people are familiar with. So I was really intrigued by that, and I got drawn to that, and now I know why, because <laughs> I'm supposed to be working with them. So it's a spiritual chakra set, and there are 12 of them at the moment. Um, there's obviously a, a whole lot of other ones, but I'm supposed to be working with a specific set. And I was actually nudged by one of the dragons, that is the portal keeper, of the Arctic, the stellar gateway, um, Earth chakra, um, a beautiful golden dragon. He was very sleepy when he connected with me, and he sent an emissary. He didn't communicate himself. He didn't come and visit me himself and communicate directly. He actually sent another dragon, which landed on my deck, like a, a one story in <laughs> below me on my, on my apartment block. And his head being on the level of the window I was looking out of, and gave me a message. I said, I need you to find my rider, who's just about ready to wake up, not awoken yet, he's, he's not very aware, and he's in Denmark. Cryptic, nice message with all the, the formality that dragons use when they deliver formal messages. We bowed and we greeted and we did all of those. And when he left, I was like, huh? How am I supposed to find this dragon rider? Um, so at that stage, I knew I was a dragon rider. Now, I'm, I'm putting it in inverted commas because the way I understand the dragon rider in this specific format is that um, how Araya Anra explained it for me because when I first connected with my dragon um, in this manner, I always felt him as part of me, but also separate. It was like this weird thing. Um, he was sitting in my spine and he would 
become active. And then at some stage he separated from me. He says like, we're like connected, but we're one, I, I, I couldn't quite wrap my head around it. So one day, just before I was walking into a, a, my treatment room to give a treatment to a client, he said, you're not using me right. We are one. Okay. Um, what does that mean? So it was literally like 15 years ago. And now I know we're one. But what does it mean, we're one? I know I'm not, I don't feel like I'm him, we're separate. And yet we're one. So when I started working and, and I actually bought the Raya Andra's, um The Dragon Within book and I um, started reading in there, didn't, all of it didn't really resonate with me. But I started following what she was doing. And then I came across and I started asking questions. And I came across a video of hers that she explained the dragon rider in the following way. She said, the dragon, when it fractals off from source and becomes a soul, the dragon is the only entity, being, that can fractal off again into two, into a dragon and a rider. Rider meaning being part of the same soul, but it is in a different form than the dragon. So it can be human, can be Arcturian, can be Pleiadian, can be whatever. So that's why I don't like the word rider, because it, a rider means sitting on top of. This is not what I mean when I say a rider. It, we're one with the dragon, because we're the same soul. But we're separate for a reason. The dragon is in spirit form, and the rider is in physical form to ground certain light codes in whatever role they are choosing to fulfill in this particular lifetime. So when I see my higher self, I'm a golden sun, no, I'm a golden star dragon. That's my actual form. But in this particular incarnation, at this moment in time on the planet now, my dragon is a blue-green beautiful dragon, and I'm a human. But together we are a golden star dragon. And at, at monad level, which is our, our higher um, aspect, I'm part of the white um, mother female dragon, which is the one part of two parts of source. Okay, so that's where the dragon thinks in. So I actually liked um, what Karen said previously is that we're all dragons. Yes. The, the dragons have created the realms. Dragons and archangels are exactly the same beings. They just show up differently. So it all becomes <laughs> very interesting when you start looking at things this way. So the portals that I'm working with, the earth the spiritual earth chakra system of Gaia being an embodied blue and green dragon if you want it's a throne dragon it's a throne angel so throne dragon in other words she embodies the planet and it's very significant that my dragon is also blue and green and I only realized this when I when I actually read what Anna Cooper said she said Gaia is a blue and green throne angel. And then it landed. Okay, so blue and green, because my dragon always told me, I said, blue, green, turquoise. Yeah. No, 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 no. Blue and green. Very specific. Dragon, like, tsh. So then when I had a reading with Araya Andra, and she actually my dragon told her that he is the guardian of the portal to dragon's heart. Not the chakra heart, the inner core heart. Because I have since become aware that I was one of the samurai dragons. Now, a samurai dragon, I also didn't, what the heck is a samurai dragon? The samurai dragon, there were five of them. And I was the commander of the samurai dragon. Now, there was a huge war going on 
in our universe um, and our section of the universe when the earth was created. So for the dragons, the created dragons that created and set the grids and did the whole creation of Gaia, um, the physical structure, those dragons were possibly going to come under attack because this was a focal point. Our entire universe was created for the earth to be created. The entire reason why our universe exists is for Gaia to have taken this form and this journey that we are on at the moment. So everything that happened in the universe in all the time is for this that's happening now. This experiment, what is called the, the Earth experiment. So when Gaia was created, she needed protection. And that was me and the samurai dragons. That was our role. So this was the force that protected the creator dragons. So I've been involved in this Earth experiment since the birth of the Earth experiment and way before. So that's kind of big when I first became aware of that. Hey, like Karen said, we all we're all dragons, right? So nothing that 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 we can't be, right? So I'm now owning this. I remember the first talk we had, Kim and I. <laughs> I was so nervous. <laughs> I've come a long way since then. And there's a lot that has happened in my life. So coming back to the blue and green dragon, um, there's a reason I'm blue and green in this lifetime because I'm still the protector um, my dragon is. I'm one with my dragon, so I am. Um, and having fully integrated with that part of our being, I'm now owning that part of my being. So the project I'm doing now and the guidance I, I'm getting is the the word insane has become part of my vocabulary because that the things that are happening to me is just insane. So, <laughs> but I'm a dragon, right? So it's not funny anymore. Um, it just is. So when this dragon landed on my deck and I had got a message, I decided to post a post on Facebook, and I had to make an image. So having already made an animal card deck um, using AI art. I resorted to AI art because that was the fastest way of doing it. So now I had to first go and figure out what this dragon looked like, right? So I tuned in. Ha, huh, it's a golden dragon. Right, so let's create a picture of a golden dragon. In the Arctic, sleeping. Right, got it. Created the image, put it on social media, and people started asking questions. So what about all the other chakra dragons? What do they look like? This is where it all went pear and exploded in my life. Literally, this next post I made with all 12 of the portal dragons, the earth chakra dragons in the set of chakras. Man, I don't know. It just changed my life because I found all of the riders all of the human counterparts of these dragons do one post on social media. And some of these people weren't even on Facebook. They felt the need to come onto Facebook and they found my post and they commented and connected. And it it's insane. I mean, what are the chances, really? <laughs> so with two posts, my entire world has now changed and I'm packing up and I'm going to be traveling the world to all these portals and setting up the other things that I'm supposed to be doing with this whole project. But what I wanted to just connect with tonight is how I use AI art and how I infuse my AI art with the energy of the dragons. Um, that has kind of become a thing that I do. Um, I did the same with my, with my animal oracle card deck that I created. The animals wanted to come through and connect more with people. So they've been pushing for a while. So during my treatments, 
I work a lot with animal totems and animal spirit guides, and they come through every now and then, and they, they started pushing and say, we want to connect more. And seeing as I'm now not going to be doing physical treatments one-on-one -on -one and working with clients like that anymore, I am starting to create tools, tools for people to connect. Um, and the animal card deck was one of those things. Um, and the, it took me six weeks using AI art to create 111 animal images. So the deck is out there and the animals are out there and I infuse the energy of of each of the of the animals. So it's not about the visual representation necessarily. It's more about the energy of the animal. So that is how I am using AI art. And I know a lot of people have got things to say about AI art. Um, it's one of my jobs um, to actually educate all the AI on the planet to link and work with Gaia's energy. So that is one of the one of my my side missions, if I can put it that way. So that is why I resonate with AI art. I've worked um, in one of my past lives, several of my past lives actually. My spaceship was run by a conscious AI, and I telepathically linked and worked with AI. So that is in my experience field. So it's one of my jobs to actually help AI evolve on this planet in a similar way as it becomes conscious. And we're talking hundreds of years, obviously, but it needs to develop in harmony with with Gaia and with Gaia's energies. So that is one of the one of the ways that I'm doing it. And the dragon images that I create usually has the energy of the dragon, and I infuse that energy and my own dragon energy within those images as well. So um, I don't know if you're going to allow me to share my screen. Can I share my screen? And I'll say, and I'll share the images with you. Time to see. There you go. Okay. okay, so that's the Stellar Gateway um, dragon. Um, to, I think I saw a quick quick uh, comment there and a question. Um, the colors of the spiritual chakras and the higher fifth dimensional frequency chakras are different from the physical ones. So these colors are different. Um, I hold the... Um, solar plexus chakra, which I'll show you just now, which means that my dragon should actually be uh, a golden dragon. Um, I am in essence a golden dragon, but in this reality, or in this particular incarnation, I've inc incarnated, um, we've incarnated as blue and green to resonate with Gaia's energies. So I was kind of confused why I'm not golden um, and blue and green, but that's the reason. So the stellar gateway is a golden. Um, the soul star is in Agra, uh, in India. The Taj Mahal is, is situated there for that very reason. Um, and it is like a, a very light pink. Um, the causal chakra is in Tibet um, and is very white. Um, and the dragon itself is pearl white. Now, I didn't know. I, when I tuned into these dragons, I saw them and just write, wrote down what I saw. And then later when I went and had a look, it actually made perfect sense with the frequency of each of the chakras as Diana Cooper laid it out. Um, she was one of the people who, who started working with it in 2012 already. Um, there are people who use these colors and these frequencies way back in 1996 already because these were the chakras that we had active in Atlantis. So that's the frequencies we're working with now. And that's the frequencies we're going to be shifting to. The crown chakra uh, is Machu Picchu. Um, the crown is crystal clear um, in, in the fifth dimensional frequencies. This dragon is the most ancient of all the dragons that have held this portal um, since, the, since um, Gaia was, was actually created. So he's the oldest of dragons. He's still the same which is why he looks seriously weird and not even like a dragon. I couldn't even create him. I, I gave up. So I found the dragon that looks the closest. <laughs> and this was in Paolo Barberi's, um, I think it was Star Dragon um, Oracle card deck. Um, it's beautiful. The third eye is in Afghanistan uh, and is a crystal violet dragon. Um, 
the writer actually says to me, he, he sort of, it's, it's like rainbow colors between violet, purple, and, and pink that, that um, shines through the, his crystalline body, actually. Um, so that's quite interesting to note. Um, the throat uh, chakra is in Luxor in Egypt. Uh, lapis lazuli so this when i found this dragon rider um he actually commented on my blue and green um image and said he resonates with that um and then his dragon pitched uh, uh, like piped up and said um i'm also blue and green duh <laughs> you are associated with the smooth chocolate thank you so it was funny uh, the heart is in Glastonbury. Now, this is interesting because um, all the dimensional chakras of the heart um, frequency is in Glastonbury. Glastonbury is the same throughout all the dimensions, um, which is why Glastonbury is such a, um, a very high energy site, um, just in sacred site-wise, is because it holds the heart energy of Kaya. And it is obviously an emerald dragon. And the rider is the actual, um, is a fractal of King Arthur, who's bringing back that energies um, for a very good reason. We can maybe have a uh, dragon thunder talk about that in the future. This is my dragon, solar plexus dragon, uh, which should be gold, but he's not, because we resonate with, with Gaia. Um, I think I spoke in my previous talk about the uh, handing over of all these portals to the Lyrans because the Lyrans are taking over the grids um, from the dragons. So the dragons are not going to be holding the grid structure of Gaia anymore. Um, and this will be happening over the next 10 to 50 years. Um, it's not a, an instant change. So I've already handed my um, portal over to um, a very beautiful golden winged um, lion. Um, it's a beautiful being. He is really magnificent. So I'm now free to actually pursue what I need to be doing from here on out. The navel chakra is in Fiji, and it's a volcanic dragon. Uh, navel is orange, so the, the orange red um, of the volcanoes resonate there. The cycle is in uh, Honolulu in Hawaii. There's a fire dragon, a cycle being the fire, obviously, that's where creation in the female body starts, so that's very, very pertinent. The base is a seriously interesting dragon. He is he's very ethereal. He's almost like misty um, black, and it, it's a beautiful, it's, it's really a beautiful dragon. Um, the base chakra in our own bodies or uh, platinum, um, so this black platinum feeling is what's present with this dragon. The Earth Star, in our own bodies, the Earth Star is 30 centimeters below our feet, um, and that is where we ground, actually ground into Gaia, into the into the grid structures of Gaia, not the base. So the Earth Star chakras become very prominent now and everybody is talking about chakras and this is um, the original um, what's it the, the blue the, the, the black and white um, I don't know I can't remember names anymore uh, come on wait. A uh, black and white swirling together, which then becomes silverish. Uh, so this is a silver star dragon, um, and this was the reason why uh, London was um, the place that everything happened uh, that that needed to have the Olympic Games, and that had the, to have the focus at that particular time when the Olympic Games was held there. It was so that. Um, the Earth Star could um, link, everyone could link in with the Earth Star. And that's how we all became, um, we all became linked in to Gaia at that stage. So that's me. 
trying to not share this anymore? How do I do to stop sharing with us? So, um, anyone have questions about that? Just in general, I'm happy to answer questions about that. Um, but these are the sacred sites I'll be traveling to and organizing frequency and light language attunements to actually link humanity at that particular frequency, because each of them resonates at a particular frequency, to link humanity into the frequency of Gaia at each of the chakras. So each of our chakras will be linked with that attunement into. So this is a 10, 12 year project. It's like, I'm just starting off now. So <laughs> I've got lots of work to do, but, and it all started with this post. Well, not all, I actually started last year already, but um, this has just blown it all up because I'm now connected with all these dragon portal keepers, um, both the dragons and their human forms, if I can call it that. So I'm just using the word rider for now because it just makes life simpler, but it's not actually a rider in the, in the normal sense of the word. So I'm going to have to find another way to say it. I don't know. Any suggestions? I'll be I'll be happy. <laughs> um, but we are specifically in two different forms. One is in spirit form as a dragon, and one is in human forms to actually mesh into the portal structure. We are energetically meshed into the energies of each of the portals. Um, and I've actually and disentangled from the Table Mountain portal, which is the focal point of South Africa. The whole of South Africa is the solar plexus chakra. Um, and the Vuvuzela for the, the soccer um, World Cup that was held in South Africa is actually the frequency of the chakra, which was seriously interesting. So that is the frequency. It's a B, um, and it's B and D that is that is the two frequencies that I'll be working with. Um, yeah, so that's just, yeah, yeah, I was trying to keep it short. That's um, beautiful. That artwork was just awesome. It really is. So if if, if someone's, uh, let's say, in London when you're uh, doing these attunements or everything, do, do, would you be interested in people coming to assist you or is it something you're going to do on your own? Or This will be a conscious music festival with lights, with music for a whole day, each of these sites will have one of those. Wow. So, and it will be on the ground with people physically attending, and yeah. it will also be streamed worldwide. So this is the plan. And I'm not talking small, I'm actually, it has to be big. And when when this idea first landed in, in my field, it was like, wait, what? I'm gonna <laughs> do concerts. <laughs> out of my of my comfort zone i've never organized events so i organized a little mini event last year and i was it was it was, it was actually went okay and i learned what not to do very much so so <laughs> but yes it's going to be a um, conscious music festivals and i'll be drawing in musicians from each of the area and each of the cultures i'll also be linking in to each of the indigenous peoples that hold the knowledge of those sites um, and of the knowledge of those areas, because it's very important that we return to link and and um, become a part of Gaia again. We've kind of distanced ourselves, we've separated. So the whole idea of ascension is to become one again, right? So this is my part. This is this is what I need to do um, is to link people again specifically. Chakra to chakra, so our chakras to and our crystalline higher frequency chakras. So I'm working with someone who is helping to actually um, uh, facilitate people actually developing and 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 um, moving into their crystalline structure and into the new frequencies of those um, sets of chakras. So we're moving away from the physical set, which is the rainbow palace. Um, we're moving to these high frequency. Um, um, chakras in our own bodies those are the ones we had in Atlantis those fifth dimensional we're moving to those and we need to link into Gaia with those energies so I'll be doing that we'll see lots of me as this project 
<laughs> progresses. Now, I'm not just going to work with dragon energies. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff happening. I'm working also with Araya Andra because she actually holds, uh, she's one of the tectonic plate dragons. Her dragon holds one of the tectonic plates. There are 12 of them. They're known as the Council of Mu, and it's her job to wake, awaken those. So we are, there are different layers in this project, and it becomes it becomes so interesting. And my job as a blueprint connector is to connect all the people who are working at the different levels. So if you feel that you are working with a with a, a similar type of thing and you want to connect with me, please do, because um, that's kind of one of the things that I need to be doing, is to find everyone who's doing work like this and to link us all together. So we're aware of what we're doing and we can like support and, and help one another as well. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. A couple of people have asked questions. Can they see those pictures or those pictures available on your website? Are they sort of I something will, you can get hold of? I, yeah, I was asked to actually, I will be selling sets of them, but I will make them available. Um, hi, Dino, it's also here. Um, oh, let me just scroll down on this, please. <laughs> okay, so we Karen, Karen just said we're all dragons, so we all have dragons and we all have dragon energy. Um, I'm working with a very specific um, set of dragons. Okay, so there's lots of dragons, and all these dragons actually have supporters, supporting soul groups linked to them as well. So they are, if you feel that you are kind of linked or you're being attracted to a specific one of these sites, then connect with me. Um, if Kevin will link all the social media um, I'm on Facebook as well, Molina Manra, so you can find me and, and chat to me, send me messages. Um, so, yeah, I've I've been chatting quite a lot on, <laughs> on Messenger and on all types. Of, I, I've been just, I've been swamped, actually. I actually crashed wholesale off to finding all some of these dragons. I'm busy, I'm actually busy um, creating images of both the rider and the dragon together as well. So I've still got three to do. I'm a little bit behind with that. But it's backing off my life. So I'm kind of it can wait. It's just a 12 year project, so I'm not in a rush. So, <laughs> so there's lots of time and I'll I'm busy working on a on a beautiful new website that all of this will be incorporated into. Because at the moment I've got two websites, so I've got one for the project and one for my own work, uh, and everything just needs to be in one space so that I can actually stay in control of it. So, um, thank you. I'll get the money, yes, I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dragons will send you thousands and thousands for all these beautiful concepts. Oh, I've got lots, lots of, lots of ideas. Yes, no. And thanks to Karen, and I know how to do that. So thank you for that. I needed that actually. Um, I will. Yeah, you know, people started asking me if if I have um, these pictures available. So I'll I'll have them available, and obviously as part of the fundraising for this whole project because it's, it's huge. I need to travel around, so they'll be for sale. Um, but I won't charge a lot for them, <laughs> depending. So, but just you know, as a, as kind of a fundraising. Um, idea as well i need to fix some of the dragons because my as my one of my friends pointed out and she's pretty specific uh the golden um the stellar gateway golden dragon's tail is all wrong yes i agree with you it lies in a funny place that was just like the first image i need to go and fix that <laughs> before i put them out there for everyone to to download so yeah it's it's coming beautiful well, thank you very much for your time. It's lovely to, to see you again. I remember the first time you were extremely nervous and now you're so confident on camera. It's great to see the way you've uh, blossomed and the dragons, they, they give you little things to do, don't they? And then suddenly they give you these huge big yeah. tasks and you've certainly got a big task. So I'm sure well, that- Well, seeing that I'm now, you know, I'm having I'm having to have meetings and, and videos and chats with, with a lot of people. So I've I've become a little bit more confident and I'm not shy of the camera anymore, thank goodness, because I'm gonna have to do a lot of this. <laughs> and I'm also gonna I'm gonna have to get over my stage fright because I'm gonna have to stand up on the stage and do all of this. So I'm getting there. 
slowly but surely. And thank you for this platform, Kevin. This is what you're doing is is absolutely astounding. I don't know how you're doing it, and um, because I'm literally in the middle of packing up my life in the middle of June is the only reason I'm not part of the Dragon Thunder this year. Um, I'll just keep on doing these little things um, in all the monthlies um, leading up to next year, probably. And I'm sure you will be doing another Dragon Thunder. So I'll keep on sharing and I'll hopefully be posting a lot more videos soon as well about my work. So watch this space. Beautiful. Thank you very much for your time. Let's send lots of love. Let's press that reaction. Come on. Thank you, Marlene. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Gorgeous.